Alrighty guys, what is up? Welcome back to Mosquito Fish Breeder, and today we are going to be watching this video by Christopher Scott. He has 78.5k subscribers as of recording this video, and we're going to be seeing how he's going to be breeding hundreds of new fish. And these are specifically a mosquito fish. So let's hop straight into the video. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. If you happen to be new... Just, that's beautiful. Thank Already I'm blown away by his tank and it's just the intro. To check us out. Today we're going to be focused on a breeding setup. And throughout our time here on YouTube, we have bred all kinds of color strains of guppies. We have success... Yes, yeah, guppies and mosquito fish are kind of similar, but they are not the same thing. They are similar, but they are not the same thing. Mostly because they're live, they're both live bearers. But yeah, other than that, they and there's like a few other similarities, but they are not the same fish, by the way. Successfully and very unsuccessfully bred crabs, and now we're working on what happened to the crabs on some different color shrimp strains. But today Ooh, we're going to focus are pretty. on a brand like the new blue shrimp. species of fish that we have never bred before. It is a live bearer, so they will give birth Mosquito to fish! Young, which makes them simple to breed. I'm trying to see if those are eastern or western mosquito fish. Maybe I should stop pausing and just watch the video. Alright guys, I won't pause anyway. This is an easy setup for anybody to do. If you happen to like these breeding videos, make sure you subscribe and turn on that notification bell because we're going to be giving you updates on our baby vampire crabs and our other breeding projects in the next few videos. Hey. Now it's time to wash these bins, and I'm going to use some Blue Dawn dish detergent. And I got a lot of negative feedback in a previous video that I shouldn't wash these with anything. Well, I will respectfully disagree with you. Nah, you should probably wash them. He'll explain why, but it, it's there, there can be stuff on there, but also wash the soap off because the soap's also not good. The plastic is made from oil. And the oil residue left inside of this plastic is extremely toxic to the fish. By using this Blue Dawn dish detergent, it removes all of that oil residue. I'm not yeah, sure that's kind of why. You should use it, but if you decide to, make sure that you use one single drop in your plastic bin, and you will want to rinse it until. Yeah, just make sure to rinse it. Otherwise, I would say it should be fine. Yeah, just be careful with chemicals, fish. Alright, now we're getting our substrate. Some dirt. Now these breeding bins are going to be dual purpose. We will also be growing plants for sale at freshwaterscrub.com. So I'm filling the bottom with a mixture of different types of substrate to make a dirted system. There are plenty of recipes out on the internet that you can find, and this one seems to work best for me. Alright, let's see. Right. Looks we're in good so far. These systems, we're going to lay down some root tabs over top of this dirted substrate. We're also going to be using some additives. Mm, so he's put some well. root tabs in. I've never heard of those before, but I'm assuming they're something for the plants. <laughs> Now that we have I'm guessing they're like food or something. Prepared, we're going to come back with a sprayer full of tank water and we're going to clean off the insides of these tubs, washing all the dirt and debris down into the bottom. All right, so far so good. So far I'm saying this is a good tank for good tanks. Looks like there's four of them, so good four tanks. All right, oh, he's taking them. Now that we have this system put where it's going permanently, it's time to cap off this dirted substrate. And what we're using is a silica-based pool filter sand. This sand makes for a great capping material, as when you press plants down into it, it will immediately fill the divot with the sand, preventing the dirt yeah. from coming up underneath. This will hold yeah, you guys want to make sure you put sand. It also keeps the dirt from getting in the water. Substrate. Now I could use something like fluval stratum as an example and just call it a day but i've only got about a hundred pounds of that left and at fifty dollars per 17 pound bag i think i'll save that for the intricate aquascapes that i have planned coming up on top of that everything in this one bin right here which would take about 10 pounds of fluval stratum is costing me right at about eight dollars so it's a much more economical method yeah. 
There was not much commentary. I did a ton of commentary at the now beginning, but now there's not much. Up, and I'm going to use the paper towel method. I lay a paper towel down in the bottom over the substrate, and I lay the hose directly on top what? of it. That way, when I turn the water on, it fills over the top of the paper towel and does not disturb the substrate, preventing the water from Ooh, getting that's... overly cloudy. That's that's actually a really good idea. Like, actually. Like, um, And now we're impressed. gonna head over to freshwaterscrub.com and use the code PLANTS for 10% off some this filter. filter. I like to use these filters in all of my setups because you can fully articulate the arms that hold the sponge, which allows you to put these in places would normally I'm not I'm trying fit. to look and see, make sure the and baby fish won't get aeration. sucked up. We'll put a check valve on here to prevent backflow of water into the aerator. When you are running... Yeah, that would be bad. ...from a single aerator, it is imperative that you run your longest line first and then cut every other line to the same length. The reason for this is because air will take the path of least resistance, which means that if one hose is shorter than another, then that particular filter is going to get more airflow than the one further away. Yeah, I, yeah, that's pretty smart. I wouldn't even have thought of that, so... One thing I did not show on camera was the fact that I de- Dude, it's barely fi it's just fizzling out. Maybe it hasn't started up this yet. Water with some API stress coat plus, as well as added some API Yeah, coat I've got two of those right over on we'll my shelf, actually. For a couple of days, then we'll test the water to make sure it is safe for the fish. And Dude, why is that one bubbling so much, but this one's barely bubbling? I, in the meantime, um, I'm, uh, I'm hoping that there's enough uh, air in there. I don't know, the mosquito fish are pretty hardy, I doubt they care. I mean, I'm sure they care a little bit, but they're, they'll survive. I have, like, no experience with aquarium plants. Like, I'm just gonna say this, all I've had is some water lilies. Like, I'm, I'm, I've considered duckweed, but it's just some of my tanks don't have, like, glass sides that I can see through. So, well, actually, my only tank currently has no uh, see-through glass, so I'm worried that the duckweed is just going to take over and I can't, like, look down in the tank, so. That's why I haven't done any of that, but maybe I will if I get a glass tank, which I well, plan to. All kinds of things in here. We have things like hornwort, different kinds of crypts, Amazon swords, Java fern, different types of no idea what any of that is, but sounds cool. You can find Looks nice. Your list at freshwaterscrub.com. And now, what everybody's been waiting for. Let's get these fish in here. These are gambusia, and they are live bear. Okay, so they are western mosquito fish. So all you have to do is have a good setup, put them in there, and they're going to make babies. Well, that guy is the GoPro or whatever it is in the water. Yeah, those are western. Look, here comes more! They're all like, yeah, he finally... Wait, he didn't acclimate them, though. I hope he acclimated them, like, in a bag. Oh, he probably did. Or maybe the the bag temperature and the tank temperature were similar enough. Maybe he didn't get him in a bag. I don't know where he got him. Alright, we're getting more mosquito fish. Ooh, that's cool. I'm, like going through the leaves and looking at them. Uh, those well, plants look you nice. To enjoy this video, and you have enjoyed yeah, yeah, watching did. the setup of these new breeding systems as well as plant grow out systems. Now. While I was filming this video, if you haven't seen my last video, right in the middle of filming this video, I had a major catastrophe occur in the house. Uh -oh. And you can see that right here. The 300 gallon ruptured a seam and was spilling water everywhere. So we fully uh -oh. had to break that down. And if you haven't watched that video, make sure you go back and watch.
What? You're, did he say 300 gallon or did I just mishear him? 300 gallons of water just pouring out in your house? Definitely not what you want. Not ideal. So, uh, yeah, I hope you got that situation sorted out. Terrible. But we'll get that thing set back up soon and get it going once again. But with that, guys, hopefully you went on to enjoy this video. Hopefully you're enjoying it. Yeah, the I did. If you are, make sure you drop a like and make sure you subscribe and turn on your notification. All right, I already liked, but I'll go ahead and subscribe. Bell. As well as go follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Links to both are down below in the description. And of course, use your 10% off code of plants at freshwaterscrub.com for 10% off all the merchandise. Alrighty guys, you go buy from freshwaterscrub.com and if you enjoyed this video of me reacting to this guy's video, then please consider subscribing and I'll see you guys next time.